22 verse verses um, 11 to 15. Okay. It says, In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ. This is, by the way, the New King James Version. Buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against you, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, I don't plan to talk about baptism, but this is what this scripture is about. Colossians, who was his letter written to? Obviously, the church in Colossae. And uh, how do you come into the church from the world? Because also, because we were we are we were born in the world, in Adam, in the world. And Christ came and created the church. So we have to leave the world and come into the church. And how do we leave the world and come into the church? Through repentance and baptism. So we see therefore that virtually all of the letters of Apostle Paul are written to the churches, those that are in the church, those that have left the world and are now in Christ. And we've come into Christ through repentance and baptism. So there's a lot in these letters. So here therefore it says, when you were also circumcised with the circumcision, I'll go verse to verse, okay, verse by verse, with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh, of the sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ. Baptism is compared in the scripture to circumcision, where we know that God instituted circumcision for the Jews. And uh, if you were not circumcised in the Old Testament, then you were not one, you were not, uh, one of his people. Yes, you were not one of his people. So that's how it was. And similarly, so and similarly, in so a lot that was happening in the New Old Testament was preparation for the coming of Christ in the New Testament. So we can see, therefore, that why God instituted the uh, 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 law of circumcision uh, to His people and uh, for them to be His people through circumcision. Similarly, in Christ in the New Testament, Christ is to get baptism. After his death and resurrection. Hence, the Great Commission is said, go around the world and preach the gospel to them. Those who and make disciples of all nations, those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Amen. So, circumcision, baptism, therefore, is likened to circumcision in the New Testament. And here it says in verse 12, it continues that, buried with him in baptism, in which you were raised with him through faith in the working of God. Who raised him from the dead, buried in baptism. So that is telling us something already. We already know from this so far that we come into Christ through baptism. And how? So this is telling us a form of baptism, immersion through repentance and baptism. So the form of baptism here is immersion, going in water. In that water, in that split second, you are buried in him. You are a new creature, and then you come out a new creature. Those who repent and are baptized shall be saved. We buried in him. And then, uh, in those quick seconds that you are in that water, that is when the Holy Spirit, the sin, the flesh, the Adamic sin, the original sin is removed from you. And then the Holy Spirit places you in Christ. And then you come out now the new creature. So you were raised with Him through faith. We know when Christ, why does He talk about burial? When Christ died, He was buried. And then, now He resurrected with a new body. A new body that can go through walls, that can appear and disappear anytime. That's the sort of body that we, the children of God, will have in the new creation, in the resurrection. So, similarly, 
when you come out of the water now you are a new creature of Christ hence it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 that you are a new creature a new creature of Christ and therefore from that point on you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling and it says here in his faith it's all about faith so it was God that raised him from the dead and you being dead in your trespasses and his uncircumcision of your flesh he has made alive together with him having forgiven you all trespasses sin is death the soul that sin shall die so in the world people go around their daily business but spiritually they are dead spiritually they are dead it's the spirit of god that gives us new life the spirit gives us new life so in that scene you are dead you are seen you are trespasses and the uncircumcision of the flesh but now when you come out of your barrier of your work of baptism you are now alive in crisis he has made a life together with him having forgiven you all trespasses so the devil tries to remember you know the lord said you are sins i shall remember no more it doesn't say you are sins i shall forget because if you forget something you can remember it if you forget where you place your car keys as it happens to me sometimes or your house keys you can remember oh i remember where i kept them you know so you go and you get them because like you only that. forgot okay but now so god doesn't use the word you are sins i shall forget no he says you are sins i shall remember no more that means he has chosen he has made a conscious decision never to remember them so the devil comes to remind him lord remember what things we did 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 15 years ago, remember what this person did, what this person did, 10 devil. years ago, 15, 20 years ago. I don't remember. They've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of my soul. What things are you talking about? No, they don't exist. They've been totally obliterated. I shall remember no more. Yes. Remember. Because when you came out of that water party, you were now a new creature. And the past is gone, all things are gone, a new creature. So God doesn't remember. So he's forgotten all of his forgiven all of our trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to the way, having nailed them to the cross, having this arm principality and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. There's power here, yeah, there's so much of this, this arm. You know, it's the sin. The sins that we commit, that's what gives the devil power over us. That's right. Legal authority over us. God does not can do nothing. Because you see whether you have the devil, whether it's forgiveness or whatever, or uh, in you, or confess you've not repented of that, or sexual immorality you've not repented of, of it, whatever, theft you've not repented of it, the devil has legal right. right. Yes, he has legal right so before Christ came yes, we were all in darkness in bondage the devil the whole world is under the sway of the evil one that's what he wants to do Christ now took those sins and laid them on the cross so the whole, all of not only the world creation angels they can see nothing is hidden anymore you know perhaps if one goes back to the school days they might have been a bully in your class or in school you know where your parent gives you pocket money you know and then maybe you did something naughty or maybe you broke you broke the teacher's ruler or the teacher's pen and you never own up or maybe you broke some school rule and then that bully saw you and then said, right now you'll be giving me your pocket money otherwise i'm going to tell the teacher and the teacher asks 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 remember anyone who ever wrote, uh, read the book called Tom's, the adventures of tom sawyer the teacher asked nobody owned up and who took this? Who broke my ruler? Who did this? Who did this? Did this? Nobody owned up. Who did? Who break this bottle? Nobody owned up. So now on, maybe because that bully saw you, and now that thing is hidden. Only that bully knows it. So it's got authority. Every time he's taking your pocket money, and your parents at home, they think that you're okay at school, but you're starving at school. You come back home hungry, and you don't understand why nobody knows. You can't tell anybody anyway until maybe you are so sick and that bully you cannot fight them <laughs> they are gonna beat you up you know they are physically stronger than you you know so perhaps you are so fed up so one day you decide i'm going to tell the teacher 
that I did it. Teacher, I'm so sorry. Prepared, the teacher punishes me, beats me up, I'm ready to take it. Yes, I'm going to see my dad with this bullying of losing my pocket money every day or doing some chores. Oh, sorry, my voice drops. My face, so just let me know, yeah? In the middle of my speech, even at work, that happens. Yeah. So I'm just sick and tired of this. Or maybe the, bull, the bully is getting you to carry their back or uh, do this and that, and you are so sick and tired of it. Now you go and you own up to the teacher. You own up in front of the class. That's what just Christ did to us. Now what have you done? You have disarmed that bully. You have no power over you from that day on. If oh no, the whole class knows that you did it. Now it's not a hidden thing anymore. And they might even come now and begin to sympathize with you. They don't even know about the bullying what you got. They're so brave to have done that. Wow. And the teacher says, thank you for holding up. Maybe they don't even punish you anymore. They forgive you. That's what Christ is. It disarms those principalities because the sins that we commit, it gives the devil power over us. One lie you tell, you never want that lie to come out. When you are living every day, haunted by that lie, there are things you cannot do one because you are trying to do this or that to cover up that lie. When that light comes out, it's forgiven, you punish for it, or whatever, you come out, you are released, you are free. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ is for us. Isn't that wonderful? So, you make public, it's public spectacle to triumph over those principalities. We are not even talking about him going to ages and taking the kids from dead. We are just talking about the cross, what he did so far on the cross. We are not even talking about it all. We are not even going that deep yet. We're just what this picture the whole universe praise the lord hallelujah amen amen, amen. amen.